Hey! Season 2, everyone! And look who we have over here! Mr. Yuha! We are, we are, we are so excited. Look at the music! Do you guys know this song? Alright, we are so excited to be back on season two, everyone. Episode number one, and who will start the show if not for Yuhan himself? That's a professional right. who has a radio station, a musician since age 13, and he wasn't just chose, uh, we didn't just choose him randomly. Yuhan is here today because we have a very important topic. So important that if you know anybody with a teenage child, Tag that person right now because this show cannot be missed. Make sure any friend that you know that has a teenager, a young adult, or anybody that you know may be possibly at risk of using any type of substances, please tag that person onto the show right now. Avi, tell us a little bit about you, hon. So first of all, we have so much let, to let talk me, about. Let me hear about myself. <laughs> <laughs> so we have so much to talk about tonight. Thank you everybody for tuning in. We have a very, very exciting show, a lot of information. So go grab yourself a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, or anything to make you feel comfortable, and let's get started. First of all, I want to tell you something. You probably don't know this. I don't think I ever told you this. But I when, I was, <laughs> when I was about uh, maybe 10 years old, my parents took me, we had some kind of event. So my parents took me to this opera house. And my brother and I are sitting there, and we're looking at each other, and we're just like, we want to get out of here, okay? We're so <laughs> bored. And all of a sudden, the music goes on, and we the opera, like, finished, and all of a sudden, the music goes on, and this cool guy comes out on stage and starts rocking the house, and all the youngsters are like, what the heck just happened? And that it was such a great night. And then years later, I find out that that person was Mr. Yuchan. And you were really, this guy is a super, super rock star. Um, Did you played, know he was doing music since he was 13 that's, years old? That's really, really phenomenal. Like, are you, are you, I'm do you have musical, yeah. uh, like in your family or? First of all, I would like to say hello. <laughs> <laughs> no, I and second, so second of all, I, I, I didn't know it's a show going on in, in, in uh, Bukharian neighborhood. Can I say something? 9.30, we have a scheduled show. <laughs> I thought it was going to be on Zoom with Max. Like, that's right, that's right. Are you on your way? He says, where? I said, to the show. He's like, I'm here in the house. I'm waiting. Like, I thought we're doing this virtually. I said, no. You told yeah. the address so, was a Zoom idea. So look at that. With, with, you know, what's going on in the world, everything now is on Zoom, but we're so glad to be here together. You came um, right away when to, you heard To too. start off the show, we actually should say, um, this is our second season, first episode. Um, Yocheved, <laughs> who is a, uh, a, a certified PA. Um, she's a physician assistant. She also does public speaking. So for any events, if you guys would like a motivational public speaker, that's Yocheved. And of course, our awesome Esther, who's also a PA and a health coach. Thank and you. tell us, what is a health coach? It's basically someone who helps people get on track with their health goals and teaches them how to get disciplined with their meals and right. sometimes with and sometimes with their finances too. So I work with health coaching and also financial coaching. All yeah. right, and I'm a licensed psychotherapist. I help people deal with uh, many different uh, challenges that they're experiencing with their life. With your own today. special style. With with my own special, special style. style. That's right. Yeah. With I have a bunch of different animals that I work with in therapy. I also am sort of I'm a certified hypnotist. And today to help us talk about very very important topics is Mr. Yuchan who's not only a mega platinum superstar but he also does so much community outreach many people know that he does so much work um, for the young teenagers but for those that don't know Yuchan has been involved with dealing um, with people in in the drug addiction world for about 17 years now 17 so, years. Wow. so, so tell us so tell us so you Yuchan. know what is yeah. so interesting nothing happens by chance just this morning, as we're planning for the show, and the topic of the show was already discussed in advance, which was opiate addiction, substance use, I see the following message that I'm going to share, and I think Yuhan is going to appreciate this message very much. I follow a doctor by the name of Dr. Afshain Emrani, and I'm sure a lot of you follow him, and he shared a post written by Dr. Laura Berman. This is the post. It's very touching. Listen to the following words, because I know Yuhan can contribute after I finish. My beautiful boy is gone, 16 years old. 
sheltering at home, a drug dealer, connected with him on Snapchat and gave him fentanyl laced with Xanax, and he overdosed in his room. They do this because it hooks people even more, and the business is so good, and the kids don't even know what they're taking. My heart is completely shattered, says his mother, and I'm not sure how to keep breathing. I post this now so that no other kid dies. We watched him so closely, straight A student, getting ready for college. Experimentation gone bad. He got drugs delivered to his house. Please watch your kids. This is how they get it. Yuhan, what can you say about this post? First of all, when I, when I start uh, discover uh, the addiction, for me it was like a fun game. I thought, well, let's see what's going on in our community. So I um, uh, expressed myself to the newspaper, which is which was uh, Bukharian Times. So, and I was so criticized right away by few rabbis, a uh, few uh, leaders of our um, community. They saying, why are you trying to put dirt on our community? We have a, such a beautiful community. We don't have divorces, we don't have a drugs. That's all your imagination. If you will, if you're not gonna stop what you do, we will put special column on a newspaper and tell people, do not invite you home to the wedding. Wow. wow. I said, wow. you know what? I don't give a damn about weddings. You will invite me or you're not. First of all, if men decide to do something, he never will go back. Real men do what he's supposed to do. So I made another um, a column on newspaper, which was a letter to human. And uh, again, I remind to our community that something wrong is going on in our community. It was 15 years ago. Wow. I said something is very tricky because I see too much marijuana. Now I see uh, drugs in tablets. So I see kids in our family, in family of our friends, family of our relatives, you know, in, in neighborhood. People start to uh, ask me questions because uh, I was uh, working for Russian uh, radio and through the radio, I, I was the only one radio uh, host who yeah. had had right. three hours of, of, of air wow. so um, and after that I, I took some literature I start to connect our psychologists our psychiatrists our social workers in school I met um, a few uh, politicians and uh, one of our um, uh, politicians uh, who uh, helped to our community her name is um, Karen Kaslovitz, she, somebody translated her my program and she wrote me a beautiful letter. She said, you can thank you very much for whatever you do. God bless you. Any help you will need, just, just call us. But it, it, it works, right? So I, I made discovery. But when you do discovery, you have to have a final destination. Mm -hmm. What's the final destination? To save those kids. Wow. Right? wow. So now we came to, to the point where everybody right now knows what's going on, but we still passive. Mm -hmm. Because uh, in my practice... Can you explain what passive means? For passive means, passive means, means people, people think that, okay, my child has problem. Mm -hmm. That's okay, it's a stage. It's not a stage. It's a serious and deep sickness. Serious and very deep sickness. So we, we have some comments from our viewers that are watching right now. So Zoe Pilosova, she said, unfortunately, it was a lot of neglect and denial in the community due to shame. So it's interesting because you mentioned when the rabbi saw this um, article, he said to you, stop it because it's, uh, it's, it's denial. I understand that. No, no, no. I yeah. understand that. It's not a classical denial but because they were shocked. Well, they didn't know. Yeah, because this business... It's like it's like you know I'm, I'm I'm coming to my house and I'm saying to my wife, thank you, honey. I don't love you anymore. Mm. That's what it is. From right. from nowhere, right. it's a shock. Person will say, w right. w w w w "Were you crazy?" So, and when I uh, first of all, you can lose time in this matter. Right. Mm. And the professionals, which is um, Avi, and and I love his work because he has a unique style. Of, 
Also, we should, we should actually share. We we actually had a the way we met officially. Well, I told you guys all the story how I met Yuchan, but how Yuchan met me was a very very interesting story. We were supposed we, to meet in my house, <laughs> right? So I call I call him eleven o'clock uh, at, at uh, evening. I said, "What are you doing?" He said, "We're supposed to meet." I said, "Let's meet in." Uh, What's this for tea? Uh, yeah, yeah. We were in, in, in Alex's house, so so I, I took him. Went to, to, to the house. To it was a crisis, a highly crisis situation where you come inside and th this is where we met in the mo midst of a crisis situation where there's a mother and obviously we're, we're going to uh, keep some information private just to protect the privacy of the, of the mm -hmm. person this happened to. But you see a mother in tears crying alone, petrified, white, white skin, very scared uh, to really lose her son. And you have an addict who clearly, he's, you see that he's not thinking clearly. His judgment is completely clouded, high on drugs, wants the drugs, and really Mr. Yuchan came in and completely de-escalated the situation. Wow. And it was so, so, so highly intense. And for anybody who dealt with a drug abuser, it's, you're not talking to a person right. because their judgment is completely, their eyes are parents, eyes clouded. Parents think if they will give to addict more love or respect or whatever it doesn't work because wow. he don't see anything so the only one thing to, to you know to, to talk to him seriously so let me let me ask you this so let's say we have parents watching right what would be some signs that your child may be into drugs how would I know that my child maybe I don't know maybe he's doing it behind my back what do you think from experience Here, how would I know here's the suggestion in um, I met uh, three days ago absolutely um, extraordinary and amazing uh, doctor and PhD, Dr. David Eckert. Mm -hmm. He's a founder of um, uh, uh, outpatient clinic named Parallax, and his lovely wife, Dr. Fingistin, Alexandra Fingistin, in third generation, she's Russian. They, uh, he explained to me very, very uh, easy way, I mean, very, very, uh, Clear. Clear. He said, if you see your child sleeping till 3 o'clock, mm -hmm. right? T 3 o'clock daytime. Right. So he's functioning at night. Mm -hmm. He don't do anything. He don't work. He can study. He drops school. So it's already a signal. Something is going on. Uh -huh. Second of all, you can miss it. You can find aluminum, uh, aluminum uh, uh, foil with a black... Um, dots, which is they sneeze, sneezing, they 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 smoking, uh, they smoking everything, mm. uh, whatever that opiates they they're gonna smoke. And in in a situation where we met the person, he was selling the items in the house. He was stealing from his mother. He was his stealing, mother completely broke. He was stealing from his siblings. Wow. Um, he would even get you know physical if he doesn't get the money. So it becomes a very dangerous. Parents situation. have to understand. They, they, they are success, right? They are successful family are in danger. Yeah. If the addict in their house, it's 100% they will divorce. Why? Wow. Because or father or mother will escape. Because wow. it's, a, it's a sick person in the house. If they don't have the proper support. Now everybody that's watching, this show is here to bring awareness. Now if you feel like some signs that we're saying are alarming and you're getting nervous and you're getting worried, this is not the reason we're saying it. We're telling you this so that you know to look for these signs and get the help you need. Because the first thing is to recognize it. Right. Once you recognize it, don't be ashamed to call someone trained like Yuhan so that he can help you in properly. Just to direct you guys. Listen, we're not only talking. It's not like a Jew Bozi here, right? Jude Bozi means the Jewish games. We don't play games. And I respect these people who invite me. Otherwise, I'm not going to come. Never in my life. Because uh, I don't talk for, for empty space. Glad to have you here. Because, because I know you guys care, not only care, you help. Uh, help with, the, with, the, with the, your attention, with your connections, with your profession, professionalism. But parents have to understand one thing. If you not going to uh, contact professionals, you're not going to solve that problem. True. Talking, talking about contacting professionals, I know Mr. Yuchan hates when I talk about this on live, but he actually, I didn't finish the story in the beginning, but how the, end, how the story ended up was that Mr. Yuchan took out money from his own pocket 
and said, here, I'm taking you and you're going to rehab tomorrow morning. And there were so many excuses that this boy said. He said, no, I can't because I don't have clothes. So he said, I'm going to buy you clothes. Look, I can't. I don't, I don't have a phone. phone. I'm mm-hmm. going to buy you a phone. I don't have this. I'm going to buy you that. Anything the person said that he needed, Mr. Yukon made it possible that he got it. So he got it to rehab. Wow. At this point, and we're going to talk more about uh, Mr. Yukon's nonprofit organization that he has currently. Right now, people in Israel, and also you mentioned you have um, Bulgaria. people in Bulgaria. Bulgaria. Um, there's people that he uh, supports uh, for everything that they need, and of course, there's outreach, and he's he's asking, and we're going to talk about uh, later towards the end uh, how you can contribute and help people. And I know, like you started to speak, that it's not a fundraising. Right. I mean, we just, not, we just we just want to help you right. not, 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 with this organization. We want people to understand. People, we, we, I want to people understand only one small detail. Money, which is we need, and we need not small money. To send children to for rehab. rehab, inpatient and outpatient, they have no clothes, wow. they have no shoes. What? No, because they're selling everything. Wow. Yeah. They're selling everything. It's true. If some people think they will send them to synagogue and they will be cured, wrong. Right. If some people think their son or daughter will get married and they will be good, wrong. Right. If some people think they will go to hospital and make a detoxification for them and they will come back and everything will be fine. It's wrong. It's a huge, long and very dangerous, criminally dangerous uh, process. You know, when I started my job, it was the first time I actually witnessed drug abusers, patients who actually used IV drugs, who abused opiates. And it was my first one-on-one encounter in actually speaking live with such patients because they've already been treated. Mm. And when I spoke to them and I tried to get information, I said, you know, I want to just talk to you if you don't mind so that I'm aware of this problem. I have children. I want to know what to watch out for. The number one thing all patients told me as a mother from my own children. Absolutely. They said, be careful who the friends of your children Mm. are. Wow. Know your children's friends mm. who are they going out with father wouldn't be able to find out because with the father and son it's completely different connection mm-hmm. but mother good yeah. she can do it so tell us you can why do you in your experience in all these years that you've been working with drug addicts have you seen a common denominator a reason why people start to use drugs and what do you think that is and again uh, i don't want to repeat that word first a wall but first a wall in our let's say 64 and a half thousand Buharian Jews in the uh, United States. I personally have like 1,500 phones with the heroin users. Wow. 1,500 boys and girls. And age range is um, from uh, the youngest one, which is I have right now, I can contact him because I, I put him, uh, I, I can connect him with the special specialist with license. I'm not licensing, I'm, I'm just a volunteer because uh, I'm trying to make an ethnical uh, a, a professional volunteer. volunteer. Yeah, be, because, of my, because of my practice. Yeah, yeah, and I'm going to school on, on uh, March uh, 3rd, wow. uh, which is outreach school here, and I passed the exam, thanks God, in my 50 years, 58 years old. This is a lesson we can all learn. No matter what age you are, you can always Amazing. better yourself, no matter what. I, that's so inspirational to hear that. I'm no, very good. Amazing. Thank you, thank you. Can I just say how Let, humble you are? One second, oh, you have it, I'm sorry. I, I would like to, to finish. So 1,500, uh, it, only me, but we have specialists, we have a psychiatrist here, we have a Buhari Jewish psychiatrist, we have American um, uh, psychiatrists, wow. all national. They got another number. Mm. So I think we have around 3,000 and something wow. on heavy drug. Mm-hmm. Heavy drug. Heavy drug. So heavy drug, the, the detox is much stronger and much deeper. I actually worked in detox. Yes. I worked at one call hospital back in 2012. Mm-hmm. And um, I'll tell you, for somebody like who's very sheltered, I've never witnessed, like Yochavet, I've never witnessed things like that in my life. Uh, only in the books, like we, right. we're students, so we read about it. But then when you see it in, Practically, living, yeah, in living physically. color, and these are walking, talking people, and they have a mother, and they have a sister, and they're breaking their life apart. 
and you're just curious, like, where, how, what, and so many of them, even, this is so serious, they had, um, what's that, that stuff that cleans your hands, how do I not Sanitizer. remember? Sanitizer. The sanitizers, they told me, my, my supervisor said, don't keep any sanitizers here, because they will, they will consume that. Yes. Like, on such a level of addiction that their body craves it. And um, at, at that point, we really, you know, you're, you're not treating anymore a person. You're really treating a disease. You cannot communicate anymore yeah. with reason. As much as you sound like you're, you're sharing with them a good why on how to improve and why they should improve and so much important things that they need to do in their life, it doesn't mean anything to them because they only mm -hmm. see that one thing, which is I must get satisfaction from, from this, from this emptiness that I feel. Do you know what it is? And I'm going to ask you, Khan and Avi, this also, because when I saw one thing in common between a lot of the drug users, they all have a similar diagnosis associated with them. And the diagnosis which I found to be similar, now again, it's a similarity. It doesn't mean that all drug addicts yes. have it. A lot of the drug addicts have a similar diagnosis of ADHD. ADHD. Because when I spoke to the patients and I asked them, why did you have the need to use drugs? Why did you start taking painkillers? The answer I got was, my room was a mess. My mother needed me to clean it up. I could not focus. Yeah. And then I tried this thing called oxycodone morphine, and I realized it really sets me straight. And that's how I got hooked onto it. They self-medicated with that. So now, Yuhan and Avi, because you both have a much greater experience than I do, can you please explain from your expertise, is ADHD connected to this, and what do we do if we think our child does suffer from this? I know many doctors will see that video, and many professionals will see that video. In my uh, discovery, you never treat, and you never will cure ADHD. Mm -hmm. So even if you are 65, you have it, and you will die with ADHD. But you can work with that symptoms. Yeah, that's that's actually fact. Whatever you're saying, exactly. Yeah. If you're, I'm, I'm not a doctor. I, no, but this is. This I just is practice fact. studying. We, that, that's what it is. You, you, I just play you, one on. You TV. have to contact professional. Right. What what do we do? Teacher calls a parents a conference. So parents comes. Child is 10, 11 years old. Your child has a problem. What kind of problem he has? You know he can concentrate. Oh please! If it's a good teacher, he's going to be good. It's wrong. Uh -huh. You already. Lost, mother and father. You already lost because of denial. Be because you ch you th you thinking our Buharian way. Um, Uzbek people saying bola bosa, shoh bosa. Shoh means horns or fast. Mm -hmm. So it's not shoh or fast. He can't concentrate. Mm -hmm. His brain doesn't produce mm -hmm. special chemical, chemical, yeah, chemical which is sub help him to, to uh, concentrate. So doctor, uh, doctor, teacher, give you advice. Go to social worker, mm -hmm. make special paper, contact with the professionals. Yes, it's, it's a, a, a treatment, a chemical treatment, but not opi opioids yet. Mm -hmm. So you will contact psychologists, you will contact special doctors, and you will cure your child. First of all, you spend your time with your child. Mm -hmm. Because usually parents spend one hour, one and a half hour with child with only with a command. Stop doing that, go and eat, wash your hands, go to sleep, make your... I love that. And, and it's, love it's that. no connection. I love that. And, and, and our, our, our religious community think if the, if the child will read Torah without understanding at all what's going on there, it's going to be much better and he will be, uh, you know, uh, uh, concentrated on, on God. You know, I, I very much like that you're bringing that up. A lot of times I work, and I'm, I'm a religious person, and I work a lot of times with religious people. If I'm people. wrong, you can correct no, 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 me. So, you can correct me if I'm so wrong. What I, what I, what I want to say is, uh, oftentimes I, when I do counsel families who are religious, um, and they tell me that you know they want their child to go to synagogue with them, or they want their child to learn more. Okay, please remind them who you are. So Professional. So, so, <laughs> no, he's, he's professional. Avi is a licensed psych psychotherapist. Psych 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 psychotherapist. <laughs> so, to have this license here in the United States, test. you know, you. you have to break many walls. But, but enough about me. No, 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 no. Um, So what I want to say is, and I always tell this to parents, I say safety is number one. Because at this point, you can have kids in Harvard who are hurting themselves. I mean, they're very, very smart, 
but they're hurting themselves. So what is that education going to do? Same, yes, religion is important and it can be an amazing thing, a part of life. However, you have to, as a parent, know what is your number one priority. Number one priority is safety. Yes, your connection to, to a community and all that is amazing. But like Mr. Yuchan said, having that uh, contact with your child and not to say, go do this, go do that, go do this, go do that. And just to talk about their day and, and explore more and ask them, you know, or sometimes even in the classroom where a child is misbehaving, sometimes they don't even need the medication. Sometimes there's a problem within the classroom where you need to investigate further. Or for example, in my, in my practice, Medication is always the last resort, right? There's something called a non-pharmacological intervention where there's a lot of other things like, um, you know, Esther and Yechavan and Mr. Yuchan were saying that, that there's things just with conversation, speaking to a social worker, speaking to somebody, expressing their professionals. pain. Professionals. We have to contact professionals. But also to add to Avi's point, because we have a stigma in the community that if you're on medications for depression, for anxiety, for anything, for that something health. is wrong with you, like Avi said, it should be the last resort, but if the child is suffering, and again, we're talking about last resort, okay? We can't ignore the fact that if the psychotherapy doesn't help, the child may need to see psychiatrists. It may not be a child. It may be an adult. It's not just that children suffer from ADHD. It's not just that children suffer from anxiety it's parents, it's and you are. depression. Yeah. It can be adults. Right. It can be young adults that weren't Absolutely. diagnosed as children, middle-aged adults. So if you're struggling, you shouldn't feel ashamed to go and seek help. Because if you don't seek help, what's going to happen is you're going to self-medicate. Yeah. You're going to find your own help. Right. And this is the pathway to danger. Because once you're in this pathway, it's very hard to come out without help. There's no safe way out. So it seems like it seems like here what we're just trying to say, the message that we're all trying to say, correct me if I'm wrong, is that there needs to be a, a fine line of balance, right? And why that is, is number one, if a teacher is telling you something, right? Hey, this is what we're noticing as a parent, like you mentioned, you know, don't neglect it right away and say, no, 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 my child is fine. And oftentimes, and it's in the beginning, it's hurtful when somebody tells you something is wrong with your child because your child is a representation of you. So sometimes you think like, oh, if something is wrong with my child, then that means I'm not good as a parent. But sometimes if a child has ADHD, it has nothing to do with you. This is something the child is born with. So being able to give them the skills to lead a healthy, happy life, you can do that. Uh, but not only with ADHD, but, but PT and OT, and speech, these are a lot of other issues that parents have, have, have a very hard time giving the services needed. So, you know, don't be shy. That's number one. Number two is, when you do get those services, there are a lot of other non-pharmacological things that you can do. Yes, medication is always the last resort, but when it comes to a place where the chemical imbalance is so severe where they need that help, then that's something you can explore. And something we spoke about on the phone, which I loved what you said, he said, there's a magic word. What was the magic word? There's, you can have uh, a first opinion, a second opinion, and, third and opinion. a third opinion. You know, so yeah, if something doesn't work with you, there's many different therapists and specialists and find somebody that fits you best. And also to, to, to transition, Something we were talking about as well is, unfortunately, and this is so sad, and I know some of you that may be hearing this, you're like, what are you talking about? This does not exist. However, the situation that I was talking about that happened with me and Mr. Yuchan actually happened in an area where a lot of you viewers Every are living. Day. So Every people day. who are living right under your nose, and they may go under the radar, but they're dealing with drug abuse. Uh, many times I get phone calls from family members saying, my husband is on drugs, I don't know what to do. Wow. I, have my, I, call, I found a lot of stuff in my son's room, I don't know what to do. So in a situation, and now, unfortunately, there's a lot of families, and Mr. Yuchan is going to talk more about this, but there's a lot of families, parents and grandparents, selling drugs for money. That's How? Me. It's very, That's, very easy, because the... Some of the adults, they're going to the doctor, they're saying, I have a back pain, I have a leg pain, and everything. Some of them really sick, I understand that. But the doctor prescribes 60 tablets. Wow. It's a lot, Rebecca. Second of all, uh, the communication between uh, children, I just would like to finish the topic, which is obviously said. We have right now a huge weapon against parents to children and from children to parents. It's here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a weapon. 
It's a huge weapon. You can manipulate with this weapon as much as you want. Talking about addiction. This yes, is you call him to your son, he didn't pick up the phone. You, you can sleep. It's 2 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning. But everything starts before you give phone to your child. Everything starts in, since, uh, until, uh, um, since uh, your child is 3, 4 years old. Because ADHD, which is um, Avi said, it's a attention deficit. He, he has a problem. It's a deficit of his attention. He can concentrate. It's not because you guys sit or you got problem with your genetic uh, codes or, or something. That's the child was born. The Ye yesterday you said something very interesting when we spoke before the show. Yuhan said the problem is that parents are only giving... 10, 15 minutes to their child, and that's wrong. And you said that if a child needs to speak to you for an hour, two hours, you sit and you listen to your let's child. Do, let's do our program practical. I, I don't afraid to be funny. I don't afraid to be serious. I don't, I, I, I don't afraid to look stupid either, even. I'm divorced, right? So I uh, lost my communication with my children for almost eight years. Mm. And, and, and I was thinking, what to do? Mm. So I start to little by little to talk to find out how they live, what they do, you know, because divorce it's always huge problem. Mm -hmm. And my suggestion, whatever you do, first of all, don't manipulate with children, our beautiful women. So divorce this is between you and your husband. It's nothing to do with children. Because kids for kids, you are gods. Mother and father, it's a, it's, it's Hashem. Physically, they can a, touch you. It's a golden word. Yeah. That's what it is. Wow. If the Hashem fall, if the God fall, it means there is no God. So my my gods are just the regular people. You know, they can fight, and, and I can fight back. Mm -hmm. Wow. My my right now, I'm the happiest man in the world. I have beautiful connection with my children. Wow. I know everything where they go, I know everything what they do, because they telling me by of their own will. Mm. You know? Why? Because I really wanna know. Not because I'm trying to control or manipulate. I really wanna know how my high. kids live. Yeah. You know, that's what it is. As as you know? you're speaking, your voice it sounds like you're coming from a place of strength. And I'll tell you why. Because many people who are actually watching this show right now, and a lot of times that we go on live or messages that Yocheved, Esther, and myself get, but I'm sure you can get this as well. A lot of times people feel like, oh, if I'm divorced or something didn't work out with my spouse, that's it, my life is over. My kids, my relationship with my kids has to be over. The answer is, no, it does not. You can completely live an amazing, incredible life if your relationship with your spouse does not work out. Life does not end there. And yes, you can have an excellent relationship with your kids. You were, you were saying, you were saying golden words. Just because your relationship did not work out with your spouse, the relationship between you and your children does not have to dwindle down. Yes, it does take two responsible parents to be able to have that channel of communication. Because look, you decided to get married. You decided to create a union to have a family. Now the responsible thing to do is to be there for your children. Now the worst thing, like you said, parents are children's number one role models. Even, it's so interesting to see even in therapy, when I work with people and they have such a negative relationship with their parents, as they grow up, oftentimes they sound just like their parents. Absolutely. And you wonder, why is that? They didn't like their parents. Because subconsciously, it's ingrained that their parents are the know-it-all. And in their mind, they're, the, they're the, the role models for everything that they do in life. They're gods. We are gods. And, and I would like to add a little bit. First of all, uh, again, first of all, <laughs> Second of all, besides the drug, we have another problem. Yeah. We have a suicide syndrome, mm. and which is right now number one in uh, Hasidic and the religious communities. Mm -hmm. We have a problem in religious families because children don't want to communicate uh, with their uh, parents because they was so close in, 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 in a small box. Right now I have too many religious kids. They're not on drug yet, maybe. But God forbid it will be. But but they escaped their family. So what we found, we found another solution and another resolution, let's say. We found a rabbi in New Jersey mm -hmm. who collect all those kids who left religious families. Why? Because they're always with this, oh, this naked girl over here. Look, her deeds. Look at this body. 
Of course, because they, they didn't see that. They were already 17, 16 years old. They want to get married. They were, we say after Bar Mitzvah, they have to get married. We Jews. We are Jews. So and Jewish people... What you're saying is, a, you know, porn addiction is a serious thing. It's a sexual addiction, porn addiction. But those children, we uh, send them to this rabbi. Rabbi talk to them Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, with only one condition. I'll take you. I'll help you. Here's the pool. Here's the gym. Beautiful house. All your friends are here. Let's say boys and, and girls separate. But with only one condition, Friday and Saturday, you with your parents. Mm -hmm. You okay with that? Yes, I'm okay. Bam, it works. So you found a you have to That's find professional, special. not person who will tell you, oh, you know what? He will come to right. synagogue. Everything will, will be fine. You can't play Drug addicted person never will go to synagogue. If he, he will go there only for purpose to get money. Yeah. Mm. And we a little bit will put aside the drug addiction. You know, Yuhan, I'm so happy that you're bringing some very important mm. points. Again, a lot of people are ashamed, embarrassed. They restrict themselves from saying the truth because they don't want to be judged by how people are going to accept it. I so appreciate that you are just, Thank you so you're much. so truthful and real. Very and real. I'm so honored to have you. But I want to read to you something that Zoya Pelosova wrote. She said, Yuhan, you have a lot of experience because you dealt and are continuing to deal with addicted kids and adults. I think trust issue among the addicts is important, which you are successfully doing. And I think yesterday when you spoke to me, you told me that in order for someone to get help, what did you say? They have to want to get help, right? Yes. So tell us more about that. I, I had, uh, uh, let's say, case, right? Uh, somebody called me. First of all, they, they don't say their names. Mm -hmm. you can, I have a problem. My friend, son, I, I, I right away stopped him. I said, yeah. What's the problem? Just tell me. Mm. So the boy is 14 years old. Mm -hmm. Three times already he was ramming the car against the traffic wow. just, just to kill himself. Oh my God. Two times, three times, the car is dead, but he's like it. So I said, what's wrong with this boy? Can you bring him to me? First of all, I'm putting myself on risk. Mm -hmm. I'm not licensed yet because I'm just going to school. But I have a social workers, I have a credential alcoholism and substance abuse uh, counselors who works with me. I have an absolutely great person who works with me. Um, I don't want to say his name, that's, that's his uh, right. request. So, we invite that boy, very tall, handsome, I hug him, I said, my man, what's going on? I said, I don't know, the life sucks. I said, you have full family. You have, everything's fine with you. You're such a handsome boy, what's going on? He didn't open himself. So I talked, I said, you know, when I was like you, I had a problem, you know, some people didn't accept me, who I am. You know, I had the long hair, I was hippie, but I was very good in school. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, almost golden okay, medal, medalist. Yeah, I was, I was, I was an, 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 my parents will tell, tell you, I was on a, 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 a wall, like wow. a, the best, Student of, student of honor. With the law. Yeah, but I'm trying to find what's going on. And after that, I said, you know, I made a story. I said, I had a girlfriend, you know, some girl I like, you know, and some one day boys, you know, beat me in front of her just to insult me. And I see his eyes, he started to cry. Oh, wow. I you said, what's you. going on? Why, what, what, what was that? He said, you know, yeah. it happens. So he told me story, which is I never uh, expect. He said, his girl who he likes, uh, it was basketball game. He went to basketball game and the bullies just hit him in front of her and they, they, they insult him. He got embarrassed. Insult him and they start to insult him every day. So what I said to his father, let's change the school. Ooh. We change one neighborhood to another neighborhood. You know, not, it's not easy. Mm -hmm. You have to live there. You need address there. You have to, you know, to you to really want to do that. Yeah. So in one month I see Everybody quiet, but I called him. Wow. How was everything? Good, 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 good. Now he's 21. Wow. He's good. <laughs> he, finished this, he finished school. He met his um, sweetheart in, in, in school, another one. He's completely, you know, complete man. Why? Because we found a way. Wow. Can, I, so, yeah. can I just say that, like, I, I'm just so amazed that anyone can do this i feel like i mean you are really special but yeah, i want to yeah. say something that every single person watching this doesn't take 
we are each a piece of God. Like we are each a piece of this powerful force that can help change someone's life. He just had the desire to try and help this person. That desire gave him some intuition. Like how did you know to say those things? Because you made up that story you said. Like that's powerful. You see, you see, you we touched him. We grew up, but you knew how to attack, like you knew how to come into his heart. Our community is a unique community, Buhari and Jewish community. Ashkenazi Jewish community, it's absolutely a unique community. Georgian Jews, Gorski Yevrei, uh, Georgian uh, Jews, Gruzinski Yevrei, Chinese, Japanese, you can learn from everybody. If you really dedicate your life to people, people saying, I'm a people person, yeah, let's say leaders. Mm -hmm. But in his uh, connection with people, you see he's, he's not telling the truth. Mm -hmm. If person is addicted, if the person got mental problem, psychological problem, psychiatric problem, if they trust you, if you don't lie, they will follow you. Right. Because sometimes people telling the truth, but I don't know how, but Alex saying, no, I don't want to go there. Wow. You know, it's a, it's a truth. If you telling truth to, to people, they don't like most of the time. Mm. But with the time goes, they say he was right. Right? You show the people you work with how much you care for them. I just showed them I, I care. I saw that. Why, why? He puts his heart on his sleeve And that's why like they that. want to work with you because you're right. doing it from a place right. it's of not a place judgment. judgment. It's not from right. a place of judgment. You're coming from a really honest Guys, it, it's, it's a very easy. You know, when I start my radio program, uh, some mothers and fathers will call me and they say, Johan, they, they got problem in their families. But you know, my children, when they're coming home, we're going for a synagogue, we're going to read Torah, uh -huh. and everything. I'm saying, God bless you. I'm just asking to call me people who has problem. Mm -hmm. Don't, you know, don't to, judge. and don't show off. And we have a very good e expression. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, praise brag, ourselves. Brag, huh? brag. Praise brag. ourselves brag. If you brag yourself with the children, it means you brag yourself with your health. Your health can change anytime like this. Mm. You can you can put your children and say, "Look mm. how great my children." Wow. And also, children are constantly developing and they're constantly meeting new people and surrounding themselves in different environments. So, really, parenting is work every single day mm. to be able to protect them and you know keep them close. Because God forbid, you know, when they get into high school or even to college or what, even in marriage, you know, sometimes they can fall down in hard times. And unfortunately, they have somebody at work who showed them something or, you know, they went somewhere and, you know, they, they got exposed to this. These things happen. So being able and to, to talk about what we spoke about in the beginning, being able to have that connection to, to talk to someone and give them time. Even people, again, and this happens, you know, even in a table where you can sit in a wedding or you can sit in a, in a party or in a synagogue, the, also like that bullying or the making fun or poking fun on somebody this can cause a person to go to drugs or cause a person to... Absolutely, to, because he feels that he's not complete. Right, right. exactly. And the, the, the common denominator of somebody taking drugs is having, wanting to fill that empty feeling. Mm -hmm. We all have empty feelings, all of us. Yeah. But the only thing that keeps us separate from the ones that go uh, do these addictions and that don't is that we surround ourselves with people that care for us and a strong support system. Think about it this way. There are many people in hospitals, right? That hospitals actually, if you think about it, they give pure drugs to their patients, right? right. But pay, uh, uh, drug addicts in the street, they don't have pure drugs. It's contaminated because right. drug dealers give it to them. Now we have a new, 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 new line of drugs. It's a, it's a tablet looks like the Xanax, but it's not, it's a fentanyl. Right. And we have so much drug, which is people uh, do in their houses. Synthetic so it's, it's, it's some kind of mix, some, some kind of a cocktail. And uh, let, let me tell you another thing. We don't know how many kids dying right now, because what I hear from parents, just call me when he dies and I will wow. think I'm going to come to his funeral or not. Oh my God. Two families, they, they made, um, they didn't bury their children. They cremate them. It's no usual. Oh no, my God, it's so I'm telling you that from my experience. Heartbreaking. And uh, you can't tell them nothing because you know they 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 in pain. And we talked today about 
uh, drug addiction, we talk about um, suicide syndrome, but don't forget we have another problem. We have a problem when people changing their gender. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely new for Jews. Mm -hmm. And we already have that in our community. In our community. We have yeah. men yeah. who change yeah. their sex. We have uh, girls who, who change their sex. Now we have a girls who lives with girls. We have a man who lives with men. We have so many things, but people think it's in the in bad families, right? In or, or in broke family, absolutely not. Mm -hmm. I have parents, doctors. I have a, a parents, very very successful with a huge house of three four million dollars. And on, when I tell them, let's uh, evacuate your your child, let's say to Bulgaria, it's going to be like a two thousand dollars a month. Oh yeah, it's look like a mortgage. I said, okay, do it by yourself. Don't forget, parents, and you can tell you that. Whatever you miss from your children, you will pay, and you will pay a lot. By your price. Don't think Medicaid will cover your problem. And don't think some insurances will uh, cover your problem. You, whatever, whatever time you lost, whatever, whatever time you didn't give to your, ch to your children, you will uh, pay it back with huge amount of time and huge amount of money you have no choice you are getting so much love on facebook live we are seeing all the messages keep it coming keep you come they are my phone my you. phone dead can i just say we like, need more like people my, like you his phone is dead <laughs> you like, i'm gonna tell you something we are so much short on time we're almost yeah. at the end oh, wow, wow. we're back. gonna be on for a few more minutes so if you have any questions while yeah. we have the man himself here live, such a energy us. from this guy. Why don't you share your it's questions really so we can sh ask him and he can answer it? Couple of points because I want to get to play the game. Besides knowing what Yuhan does professionally, I want to know more about Yuhan personally. So we're gonna play a game. <laughs> you don't want to know my life. Wait a second. First of all, I would like to would like to say thank to to, to this person who put the camera <laughs> right, lights right. with the There's with a special. There. You, you yeah. stand yeah, over there. What, 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 what's his name? Zalman. Zalman. Thank Shout you very out much, to Zalman <laughs> for creating the set Zalman, for us. Zalman, nice. Let us know if you like the new set uh, for and season two. And your son. Today we're at my we, we, residence. We, 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 we're in your house, right? Yes. So, so I want to say a couple of things. Very important. Very important. Yuhan, please tell us if anybody wants to donate to this great cause, where can they go to donate to your organization to help you so that they too can be a part of this huge mitzvah? My organization called uh, Yuhan's Way, we located in Queens, and uh, my organization uh, doing many, many functions. We're doing a radio, which is I missed already uh, like three weeks because in the morning I was driving with my addicts to, to um, uh, outpatient clinic and today too. If you want to join Yuhan's radio show, we tagged him on the on the status on top, so you can definitely join him. He talks about really, really incredible topics. So each patient, really each patient a year, more. each patient a year takes around fifteen twenty thousand yeah. dollars. So yeah, because we have to find him, we have to. They already call me on, on, on the street, you hunter. You hunter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's hunting us. Yeah, but, he gave you a nice nickname. But our uh, dear parents. I would like to say something good, not to scare you. Uh, if you hear word conchin in our command, mm. don't believe it. It's a lie. I not only know, I know for hundred and fifty percent it's curable, it's possible to cure, and it's possible to do that person bring them back to track and and work and be just a regular human being. It's possible. It's just a sickness. If, if I wouldn't believe in that, I'm not going to do that because whatever I do, I have to see my final result. If I don't see my final result, I never will do it. It's like a composition. You make song, beginning, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus, end. If I don't I see this. the end, I'm getting a whole musical lesson. If, I if, if I don't see the end, it means the song, it's like you start the joke, but you don't know how to finish the joke. You mess the yeah. joke up. Yeah, right. so you, you mess the joke up. You have a couple of questions. Yeah. First question, what do you do when you have a situation where the kid's parents are divorced? We touched on this a little bit. The father wants no contact with the kid since he was four years old. And the kid is very hurt and gives problems to the family school and wants nothing now to do with his dad. Is he want to contact his father? The father didn't want to contact him when he was younger. Does anybody talk to father? This business, 
and Avi will correct me. If you want to do something, if you want it, you'll do it. Nobody will convince you. Nobody will push you. You have to have to have to. You have to want it. So here's another question. Lena asks, "What are your suggestions to deal properly with ADHD, and what therapists are available to help with ADHD without any meds?" In school, child. If child in school, they have of certain doctors which is uh, belongs to school because right now Medicaid makes uh, so many um, rules and um, uh, parents have to know uh, that Medicaid give them will give them a doctor but besides the doctor they need therapist and they need the social worker too and this is provided in schools or you have to seek them out yourself school will give the, the, the doctor if, if you have your own primary doctor the primary doctor will give you the a uh, psychologist, so right? Start, start so there, there are neurologists, psychologists. It's a, it's there are people who can. There are two yeah. types of therapists. There is a school therapist and then a family therapist. Mm -hmm. So a school therapist, the primary goal of a school therapist is to help the child function in the school setting. They generally don't um, explore too much of family life. However, there is a, a family therapist that can work with the child in his environment, whether it's his relationship with the parents, his relationship with himself, his relationship with drugs, or whatever the child may be going through, even ADHD and explaining what ADHD is to the child, because a lot of the times, the children know that they're suffering with ADHD, but many times they don't even know what it is. Right. And to be able, a lot of the time, you should know, children with ADHD, a lot of them are brilliant, right. brilliant. Their mind, for those that don't know what an ADHD brain is, let me tell you like this. A regular, a mind that is not ADHD, if a teacher is giving you a test, okay, your mind is able to focus on the test. A child who has ADHD, their brain splits in so many ways that they're focusing on the test, they're focusing on the teacher, they're focusing on the on the boy in the other uh, row sharpening the pencil, they're focusing on the truck outside, they're focusing yes. on the boy it's whistling. always somebody the bothers also. them. There's so many different distractions, yeah. and it's extremely difficult for them to focus. And of course, the teacher will get very upset. Why aren't you focusing on the test? Because it's very difficult for them to express themselves. That my mind is just all over the place. Mm -hmm. So in in certain in certain times. Having a non-pharmacological intervention, speaking and meeting with teachers. Unfortunately, I was a teacher for a number of years. I taught grades second through through twelve. A lot of teachers are not skilled on helping children with ADHD. They're skilled academically to help a child learn math or learn science. And some teachers not, can't identify. It. And they can't. They can't so, because they don't have experience. Right. So, so that, that's your work to work with a social worker. Exactly. And I love parents who comes to school not once a year. At least two times a month. Right. Oh, yeah, you were talking about yeah. why. Yes. I have five kids. I'm going to be in school every so, day. So, actually, he was, Mr. Yuchan was saying, so Mr. Yuchan was actually saying, to be part of the school body, being involved, we were talking on the phone and he mentioned that, you know, being present, talking to the teachers, talking to the principals, what can I do? You know, there's actually a school, I'll give you a shout out, Hari Torah. Um, when I used to work there, the parents would serve lunch to his kids every day. And they would rotate different parents of the students would give out lunch to the, the whole school. Nice. And this way they, they were involved to see what's really going on in the building. And wow. I think this is really the best way to be aware of what's happening to your kids' lives. And what I, what I hear most of the time, oh, Yuhan, you don't know, I work for him, I feed him, I made food for him. I said, yeah, but he's 35 years old. <laughs> Why are you saying that now? You know, it's a time gone. He's 35 and still on drug and he's stupid. Oh. You know, we have to, we, parents, you have to understand one thing. You're not going to uh, contact professionals. You never will solve that problem. You know, Avi said something before. He said kids that have ADHD, they focus on a lot of different things. Now, let me just say something else. There are different types. There's ADHD, which yeah. is the hyperactive, the right. inattentive. If your child has ADHD and he doesn't like a certain subject, he's not going to be interested. But if he loves something, he will hyper-focus yeah. on it till the end. And it could be drug. Right. 
But like, my point is, like if that child who has the ADHD wants to, let's say, play the piano or the <laughs> instrument or something that they That's love, good. Piano, give DJ, that child the guitar, ability anything. to do it because he will be yeah, very successful. Yeah. To, to about, put that energy in. About that child, about the four-year-old child, the mother wrote back, I don't know if it's the mother or something, but she said the child is now 13 years old and the father does not want to come to his bar mitzvah. And the father said, I'm going to give you money, but I'm not going to attend. Can I just say, my heart is breaking for that child. And if you're the mother of that child, and, the, and you clearly see that this child's father does not want to be in his life, you be the mother and the father for that child. You be everything for that child. That child's life is not going to be in danger because he has a father that cares less about him. If you as a mother will be there for him no matter what, your child will still grow up and be successful. I really feel for him. When I read this right now, I, I got very much... I love what T uh, Tammy Fuzilov said. She said, we're not raising children, we're raising adults. A hundred percent, I agree. Sometimes we forget that they're children and we relate to them like they are adults. To end off the show, first of all, I wanted to say, Mr. Yuchan, it's been such a pleasure awesome. to have you. Actually, people were saying that we need another episode because this was so juicy. That's for you. We will, is... but I would like to say that if you would <laughs> like to uh, help to our uh, program, yeah. to our nonprofit organization uh, called Yuchan, Yuchan's Way, yeah. you can um, donate uh, your money to, to the Zell. Mm -hmm. It's a financial program uh, with Chase. With my number, 917-710-6440, 917-710-6440, or call me and I will explain to you how to donate. Uh, it's a tax-free, uh, but this money, I, I would like to say a big thanks to uh, Weinstein family, who helped me a lot, to Netcos Market, who helped me a lot. I would like to say... Uh, Many uh, words, good words, uh, to my friend um, Ruben Lviv and his family. I would like to say thanks to um, uh, George uh, and Joseph uh, Davidov, my friends. It's uh, people who uh, financially help me, uh, um, trying to, they're calling me right now. And, um, Are they watching? I, I, I think that Joseph, I have to call you back because I'm doing the TV show. Watch Facebook. Uh, yeah, yeah, just see you. And yeah, those people, they always with me. They trying to help me all the time. Uh, just call me nine one seven seven one zero six four four zero if you have any questions. I'll help you. Our organization uh, works with the uh, addicts, with people who are drug. Uh, I'm trying to work with alcohol with people who's un alcohol, but we have. Absolutely amazing um, detox for those people. And don't forget, uh, I, I always work with a uh, uh, huge um, organization. It's a brand name, uh, Parallax, uh, with Dr. Eckert, David Eckert, and his wife, Alessandra Fingiston. Absolutely amazing people, PhD, who uh, create his own structure. To on, It's only one in the world, because um, Dr. Eckert started his practice uh, from 1967. Mm. So the first uh, doctor, the first uh, uh, specialist and professional who fights crack and cocaine at that time, and he has his own um, uh, detox uh, program and his own uh, uh, schematically um, uh, structured um, advices and, and program for those uh, people. Please contact me and I'm going to help you. It's amazing. We but will we have you come back because you are percent You are Everybody awesome. say. Yeah, but I have to tell me before. They, because I'm going to make sure he knows <laughs> this in live here personally. So usually we have we have a tradition. Wait, before when, we get to the tradition. Oh, this is exciting. We have something very special. Yuhan. Yeah. Wait, 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 but before. I'm, wait, I'm wait, not going to take my clothes off. Yeah, do the intro. Go ahead, go ahead. When I, okay, so we had the idea of inviting Yuhan to the show. The problem was, I wasn't sure if he's actually going to say yes, because Yuhan is not a simple man. He's famous, he's a celebrity, he's very busy, he has many hats, even though he's not wearing any hats today. I'm so, I'm so talented. <laughs> I'm so talented. So I said, let's just try our luck, call Yuhan, and see if he's going to agree. And can I tell you, he said yes so fast, maybe because he didn't know he actually has to try. <laughs> <laughs> he said yes fast like that. God bless you. God he bless said you. yes so fast that I was like, this is too good to be true. So till the last minute, I was like, 
I hope Yuhan shows up. I hope <laughs> Yuhan shows up. No, because it's not a fundraising. You know, nobody yeah. asking money because we have so many Jewish organizations. What they call and call it, you know, how much money you... I said, guys, can you give us money to help to real right. sick people? Right, 100%. Do not go to university 100%. and take successful children right. and bring them to, to synagogue. They're already successful. Right. They will come. Wow. And we have so many organizations. I don't want to say the names, but that's what it is. So last minute, because we weren't sure, we decided... What can we get you? Well, she's taking Ooh. the gun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is exciting. Short notice. And we said, what can we get him? We don't know what to get him. So he has everything he wants. Oh, he, this guy has everything. So, but before, wait, 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 wait. The face, the face but before side. he opens it, there was meaning. Yes. It might be small, but there's meaning to it. Based on, this is a gift that really, there's something called in mental health an anchor. Whenever you see something, it reminds you keep going forward and don't stop because the job you're Simple. doing, you from the job you're doing is not easy. It can absolutely burn you out and make you feel so tired because yeah. the people that you're helping, sometimes you feel like you're They're not vampires. <laughs> You know, so, yes. you can absolutely it's open it. It's something small, but it's just it's not a like misappreciation. The, the goal... <laughs> so, so excited. I'm so happy. <laughs> what we wanted to, what we wanted to uh, give... Zombo, so 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 <laughs> thank you. That's nice. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about music. <laughs> John, we love you. <laughs> so, I'm a we want to give you. You're good. You got it. We FaceTime. Like, what should we get you for today? Last so, minute, we weren't sure. So how much love you're getting, you Oh, you can, you're getting so much love. Yes. Everybody's loving you over here. Keep it coming, guys. So, so it says, it says here, it says something called peace. And the reason why it says peace, because everything that Yuhan is doing My radio is, 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 My is, is, is to find, to help a person find inner peace. And when you look at this picture frame, this can be your anchor to help you Thank keep you going. Sir. Because Thank we need people like right you in our community. Wow, like a beach. <laughs> yeah, maybe the United States will change the beaches <laughs> for Hamza. Uh, All right, so are we ready? In Israel, they have to do that. Police, that was police. Peace. 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 Peace, yeah. So, Yuhan, so. thank you again. Now we're going to wow. play a game for a few minutes. And All we're right. going to get to know Yuhan on a personal level. All right, okay. here we go. So I know it's our tradition to play to play a game. Uh, this is also a game that you can play with your family mm -hmm. members on uh, you know dinner night or just to be able to communicate. Like Mr. Yukon was saying, find time to talk to your kids. Right. So this is a great game. It's called Would Would Ya, right? Like Would You? Uh, a game of this or that. So sometimes we ask different kind of we play different games. Today you're gonna we're gonna ask questions and you have to say either this. Or that. All right, here we go. Mr. Yukon, you go first. You ready? <laughs> He's like, what Mr. am I getting Yuchan. myself into? <laughs> no, no, me All right, here we go. Let's see, let's see. Mr. Yukon, would you rather make people laugh or make people think? Ah, oh, good question. Think. Think. Ooh, oh, that's nice. a good one. Okay. All right, you have it. You ready? I want you have to get another one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll go around. We'll go around. This is a very funny one. Get ready. You have it. Would you rather be stuck in a car with two stinky dogs or be stuck in a car with two people with really bad breath? <laughs> I'd rather be stuck in a car with two stinky dogs. <laughs> Me too! <laughs> All right. This is a good one. Here we go. Uh, Esther, mm -hmm. would you rather be a miserable genius or a happy idiot? A happy idiot. Me too. Now, <laughs> can you want to say why you want to be a happy Honestly, idiot? Honestly, I think uh, being happy above all. If du es Hashem b'Simcha, observe the world with happiness. Yeah. And and that's really not an idiot in my book. Yeah. So you know, I, I love that. I love that you're saying it. You know, sometimes people. They want to learn so much, and they want to they want to look for problems in their own life, like a, a, an, an obsessive an obsessive uh, a search for a problem in their life. Sometimes just let it be, and everything will be okay. All right, one more round. Why did you get that? Okay, all fine. The here you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Would you rather work more hours per day but less days, or work less hours per day but more days? Less hours per day, more days. Uh, who? I, a lot of I know a lot of nurses, people in the nursing field have they work a few days and then they have a few days off. Um, mm -hmm. I'm the type of person where I like consistency. 
Uh, so I know I like to get up in the morning and I know I have something to do. So I would say uh, less hours, uh, more but more days. I'm going to change the question around. Oh, to him again. To you. Oh, I'm going to change this question, okay. okay? It says here, would you like to make one new law or get rid of a law? But I'm going to actually change the question and say, Yuhan. If you were in charge of making a new law, what law would it be? Wow, that's that's a tough question. <laughs> <laughs> that's a tough question. You have to come prepared. That's, right. <laughs> that's a very tough question. If it would be a new law, yeah. I will uh, say people who have a mental problem, they must be hospitalized oh, wow that's an excellent must because for now it's not without if, if if it's no um a prog progression of their be being better they have to stay there inpatient because they're not within their right mind yes. to make decisions for themselves mm -hmm. yeah. and now the law actually just spoke with somebody before we and for selling drug it has to be at least tw from 20 to 30 years in jail well, what wow. is it now you find out oh. they go into program yeah right from the courtroom they're sick wow. yeah that's what it is you know in the united states that's the that, that's in how New they York. No. that's how they do not in every uh, uh, country if um, a drug addicted or alcoholic it's a it's a patient mm. so the law is on a patient side mm -hmm. unless he don't do any criminal mm -hmm. uh, stuff so he you know he's willing to do whatever he wants I was taking a boy to hospital, so with the handcuffs and everything, he was screaming. When cops came to make, you know, report what he did, he said, this guy took me here, I didn't do nothing, I'm just sick. And they said, sir, just step aside, you can't stay. I said, you, they yes, that. and that's it. Wow. They, took, they, wow. they put me out, they took handcuffs for him, and he left. Guys, thank you so much for I tuning want in. Yuhan to run for president. Yes, Yuhan for 2024, 2024. Uh, <laughs> last thing, if you were to give a message to our community, Yuhan, before we say bye, give your last few words to our community. There are so many people. How many people are watching right 239 now? 239 people watching so 239 right now. 239 people are watching the screen right now as we speak Good. live. And they want to hear your last final words. What can you say, Yuhan? I would like to say... Uh, very special expression to all women. We have a Jewish expression, Isha Bona Ve Isha Oreset. Woman will create and woman will destroy. So mothers, please be mothers. Not uh, bosses in the family or uh, whatever, investigators, just be mothers. Because in my practice, uh, only mother, only woman can help to our children. And only, only women will fix this problem, which is we have right now. And with drugs, and with ADHD, and with the, with the, with the children who don't want to do anything, you know, so... Uh, Does that mean the husband shouldn't worry about improving himself for that, then? What you're saying? The only husband have to... Have I'm going to play devil's advocate for all the women watching support. with, with a... Men have husband. to support. He's stronger. Yeah. He yeah. have to support, but diplomatically and, and uh, motion, emotionally... Place. You know, love belongs to women. Woman can love and woman destroy love. Mm. You know, that's what that's my opinion yeah. because I'm dealing with kids of already many, many years. This is based on your experience. Yeah, if mother goes with a child to rehabilitation, it works. When father goes, next day he don't want to go. He don't want to see him. There's that's a, it. The, the, you just remind me of a beautiful Hebrew concept. I know we're in, ending, but I think this is beautiful. Isha and Ish, if you take the, the Hebrew letter... letter the Yud in the Ish and the He in the Isha, if you take that out, that spells God. Yeah. Wow. And if you take God out of the man and the woman, you have Ish, which means fire. 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 And fire can burn a house down. It wow. literally burns yeah. your house down. Drop the mic. And on this, we're going to end. Thank you guys See so much. Next time. See next next, time. next episode of next week. Thank you for Stay tuned, thank guys. You much. You thank, thank you so much, much for so joining wonderful. us. It's been real. Thank you guys so much. This is what I'm going to do. I'm Cheers, everybody. Well, Tommy figures out how to press the What? 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 What?